Thank you, Brother Sherwin, for and your family for sharing that song. While you were singing, I'm thinking of the Fidakan family. We have I am associated also with Pastor Bong and uh, their parents. They are a family serving God. I hope and pray that my sons will also, when I get old, will also serve God and His church in this institution. To God be the glory. Amen? He is worthy of my praises and honor for allowing me to set my feet on the places where Jesus, the prophets, the disciples, and his followers had walked. The blessed place where angels went to and fro as God commanded them. So follow me as we follow Jesus' footsteps and be blessed or be blessed along the way. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, may your guidance be with me as I lead your people in this tour to follow Jesus. May your name be glorified along the way. Bless your people as you have abundantly blessed me, so that at the end, all of us here, by following your beloved Son, who left heaven to visit this sin-sick world, to walk, live, minister, and die for our sins, may become his disciples and fishers of men. In the loving and living, resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We visited, we visited Israel, not chronologically, but my presentation would be uh, in chronological order. Um, hotels in Bethlehem are named after this place, like this Ararat Hotel, Bethlehem, and um, in Israel, we have three major religions. They are Judaism, Muslim, and Christians. Judaism traces their roots in uh, through Abraham, through Asa, uh, Isa, and most, uh, Muslim through Ishmael. How about Christians? We trace our roots from Jesus Christ. And all these religion, major religions, are there actively preaching the gospel. While we were visiting the, the Temple Mount, we were approached by Muslim and said, Do you know Lapu Lapu? And he said, Actually, he pronounced it Labu Labu. Do you know Lapu Lapu? Yeah, I know him. Magellan killed him because Magellan forced you to be Christians. Originally, you were Muslim. And we have Christians there preaching as well, and also Judaism. They are active, and all of them are, uh, are they believe, yes, that Jesus Christ existed. Although Ju Ju uh, Judaism or Jews don't believe that he is the Messiah, some of them, but they believe that Jesus Christ existed. So we visit, visited this church. And on the roof of this church in Bethlehem, we have this depiction, pictures of Jesus Christ's birth. And we have this inscription, beautiful inscription. Can we read this all together? The Word 
became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen? When I was there, every time I come, I, I came encounter with uh, a Jew, I asked them a lot of questions. And I said, what is your take about Jesus Christ? And all of them are saying uh, he is a teacher, a good teacher. Uh, he is a radical teacher. They believe that he is a historical figure, that he existed. Uh, but some of those people that I interviewed don't believe that he was the Messiah because he died. So, Burr month is coming, and you'll see this, um, what do you call this? Yeah, manger. And this is Bethlehem. Bethlehem in Hebrew is Bethlehem, which means, Beth means house. And Lechem means bread. So Bethlehem means house of bread. When I'm studying Ruth chapter 1, 1 to 7, it's about the story of Elimelech, Naomi, Kilion, and Malon, who went to Moab because there was a great famine. Do you know what? They came from Bethlehem, Judah. They came from the house of bread, but there was a great famine in the house of bread. Could there be a famine in the house of bread? Could there be a famine in bakery? Could there be a famine in PIC, in AUP? Despite that we are in this beloved institution, could there be a famine? The answer is definitely yes. When I study this, the reason why Elimelech lived Bethlehem is because of that reason. Great famine. And after 10 years, sad to say, Elimelech and his sons died. And Naomi was left with what? With whom? Ruth and Orpha. And then, according to Ruth 1, 1 to 7, Naomi went back to Bethlehem because he, she knew that God visited Bethlehem by giving them bread. When I was studying this, I reflected on Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. Now, after Jesus, we all know that Jesus Christ is what? the bread of life. He was born in Bethlehem in the house of bread. There is this word play in this, in this text of Judea. So this world which is experiencing great famine spiritually, God visited by providing the bread of life. Amen? August is dedicated to promote Bible reading. I hope that you'll not experience that, that you will have that great famine despite you're here in PIC. Read the Bible, pray every day. That's why Simeon, Prophet Simeon said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. I'll show you this map. That was Bethlehem. And in Bethlehem, God provided the bread of life. And as we continue our tour in Bethlehem, we'll find this bread, lots of them, here and there. Bread here, bread there. That's why when I was there, I remember Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, Man shall not live by bread alone. Probably, if you'll use contextually, you'll say, man in the Philippines, man shall not live by rice alone or by noodles alone. 
Yeah. So after, okay, I'm sorry. After Bethlehem, God commanded Joseph to go to Egypt. Okay, you see that? Uh, and then after Egypt, in that corner, okay, and God commanded him to go because he had already died. And then, but because Joseph was afraid, instead of living in Bethlehem again, he went to Nazareth. Okay, let's go to Nazareth. Nazareth, in this place, uh, this is my uh, this were the, uh, my friends, classmates, and also professor who were with me in Jerusalem. I said to them, let's stay here for, let's stay here for several hours. Why? Because Jesus Christ spent his almost 30 years in Nazareth. Almost 30 years in Nazareth. And you know what? The Bible actually is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John great percentage of Matthew of the Gospels are started from the th last three years of Jesus Christ's life. And he went and lived in a city called Nazareth, according to Ma Matthew 2.23, so that what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled, that he would be called a Nazarene. So, he lived in Nazareth. And when you visit there in the church there in Nazareth, you will find this. You can see Philippines uh, and translated there the message that God sent through the angel. And you know what? Uh, in the scripture, evil spirits angels of God, the disciples, and the crowd address Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth. In fact, when Jesus Christ died, Pilate put what? An inscription, Jesus of Nazareth. And when Jesus Christ died and when he was resurrected, he already ascended to heaven when Paul was persecuting the church, Jesus Christ, during his encounter, or Paul, during his encounter with Jesus Christ, said, Jesus Christ said, I am Jesus of Nazareth. Even Jesus Christ himself is associating his name with Nazareth. Why? Because Nazareth, he spent He's almost his entire life in Nazareth. Now let's go inside a synagogue. As in, according to Luke 4.16, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and he stood up to read. Synagogue is not big. Probably PIC can host three synagogues. And in this particular place, someone who is requested to, to read the scripture, they'll read it here, from here. So I stood in that place. And I praise God for that opportunity of... Uh, setting my foot in Nazareth. Yeah, I have a picture with this uh, man. I'm wearing the uh, prayer shawl. This prayer shawl is being uh, worn by a, uh, a Jew, a male Jew, when they pray. I also had the chance to taste pomegranate. Yeah. Good news, we have a church in Nazareth. Amen? Yeah, so 
Unfortunately, we're not able to worship there, but we have a church in Nazareth. That's good news. And also, uh, I want, of course, when I buy something from Israel, I want it to be originally from Israel. But if you're not careful, you'll find some made in China. Okay? Yes. Okay, now, after um, Nazareth, he went to Jordan River to be baptized by, by whom? By John. You know, there are two places where this baptism, they believe, occurred. One is the traditional place, but this place that I'm showing you is the best option or better option because there are only two uh, options. And this is a secluded place. Um, they are guarding it. Yeah, you see? Sometimes we don't want to baptize people in this kind of water, right? <laughs> Especially pastors, you'll not bring your interest there because their minds, their decision might be changed. <laughs> and you'll have bad experience, okay? I met there Jesus. His name is Jesus. Yeah. Uh, he was with us in Lakish, digging in uh, Lakish. And yeah, we visited this place with him. Now, after Jesus Christ was baptized, he went in number five, that's Capernaum. So after almost 30 years, he went to Capernaum, and Capernaum became his place of residence for um, almost three years. And according to Joseph, who uh, is our driver in the Jesus boat, uh, he said, Almost 70% of the gospel, or not 70, but majority of the gospel were written uh, in the vicinity or during the time of Jesus Christ um, living in, in Galilee. Yeah, so here, you see the Sea of Galilee, Kineret, and then Capernaum, Mount of Beatitude, um, yeah. And then Capernaum, the town of Jesus. Do you remember when Jesus Christ said to someone who would, who would like to go with him, he said, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man have nowhere to lay his head. According to the book that I uh, read, Jesus Christ stayed with Peter during that uh, period when he stayed there in Capernaum. Because in Capernaum, you'll find this, the late 4th century A.D. white synagogue built upon the remains of the synagogue of Jesus. So under this synagogue, okay, under this synagogue, you'll find the synagogue of Jesus. Where Jesus Christ, in a certain Sabbath, Sabbath worship, and after the divine worship, he went to, to whom? To Peter, Jesus, and Jesus entered Peter's house. This is, uh, they believe that this is the house of Peter. He saw his mother-in-law lying sick with a fever. But let me remind you, even those people, the priests there, they don't know exactly where it happened, but of course, uh, if, I'm, if I say to you that Peter's house is in the Philippines, you won't agree, right? But it's somewhere in Israel. Yeah, so we will now go to Ginosar. I don't know if we have sound because I'll be showing you something. So this is Sea of Galilee. The best experience I ever had. I said my, you know, dollars... Um, the, the amount of money that, that I spent is already, you know, was already, um, you know, what I mean is just, just um, 
experiencing Sea of Galilee. It's worth it. So I... Yeah, this is Jesus' boat. And we went and surround and worship and meditate while we were riding on this boat. Let me see. Yeah, there's no sound, but please you can see. You'll not see my face there because I'm the one. Yeah. You'll appreciate it more if there is sound, but it's okay. At least you see the Sea of Galilee. Jesus Christ did lots of miracles here. And there is no other option for, for Sea of Galilee. Yeah. And that place is uh, a place where Jesus Christ healed people who are sick, delivered those who are possessed by the devil. So now, let's proceed to Mount of Beatitudes where Jesus Christ had his uh, sermon as you are reading it in Matthew chapter 5. Let's read this, Matthew 4, verse 25. And great crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis and from Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond the Jordan. So those who listen to Jesus Christ, they are coming from far places, from Jerusalem, from Jordan, from Syria. I'm showing you this to prepare you for what I'll be showing you uh, in a minute. Bethsaida. Bethsaida, according to one John 1, 44. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. So Andrew and Peter was from this, were from this place. And also James and John were believed to be also from here. But unfortunately, this place is ruined already. No people were uh, living there or are living there today. Because in Matthew 11, 21, Jesus Christ said, Woe to you, Chorazin, woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works in, done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Jesus lived there some near the place. And the disciples of Jesus came from that place. But you know, they rejected Christ and they did, didn't repent. Probably, God is showing you mighty miracles while you are here in AUP. Throughout your life, God has sent you miracles. But despite the miracles of God, we still many times reject Christ and live a life apart from Him. So my dear young people, I hope that this won't happen to you and to me or else we'll be having a ruined life. Ah, let's eat. That is only 11 o'clock. So Magdalena, named after Magdalene. So we went in this place, and this is good news for us that God is no respecter of person. Whatever your background was, amen? However dark our life was, or our life is, 
If we come to Jesus, He will receive us and take us, take us as His own. Amen? Now, um, we'll all go to Jerusalem. Another good news, when you go to Jerusalem, you'll find this Advent house. Yeah, it's big. Uh, we spent two nights there in the Seventh-day Adventist Jerusalem, Israel. So we have several churches. I don't know how many, but less than 10. And the pastor there uh, in this church uh, was Pastor um, Julio Mendez, a Filipino. Yeah, and we have a pastor also who is a Jewish. So now this is the inside of Jerusalem, the old city of Jerusalem. Yeah, this is the city of David. And inside the city of Jerusalem, you'll see this pool of Bethesda, although there is no water there anymore. You'll remember the story about a man who was paralytic for how many years? 38 years. And no one... Uh, brought him to the pool. And when I was there, upon entering the pool of Bethesda, although no one knows the exact location of this place, unlike the Sea of Galilee and the Wailing Wall, I sat down un under the green trees, reflected and prayed. Somewhere here at the site, Jesus healed the person who was invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying and knew that he had been there for a long time, he was moved with compassion and asked, Do you want to be healed? The sick man uh, replied that he, hard, that he tried many times to go to the pool to get healing but to no avail. Jesus said to him, Get up. Take up your bed and walk. And the man was healed. Have you been struggling for years with spiritual, emotional, physical battles in your life? Have you tried many times to get to the pool, hoping to get healing but to no avail? Here, Jesus asking you today, now, do you want to be healed? Who wants to be healed? Just please raise your hand. Amen. Get up and take up your bed and walk. Ellen White said, Through the same faith, we may receive spiritual healing. Our souls are palsied. Of ourselves, we are no more capable of, of living a holy life than was the impotent man capable of walking. That's why, as pastors, as teachers, we need to be compassionate to our students. And students, to your teachers and to your parents. Because it's hard to live a holy life without Jesus Christ. There are many times, uh, there are many who realize their helplessness and who long for that spiritual life which will bring them into harmony with God. The Savior is bending over the purchase of His blood, saying with inexpress inexpressible tenderness and pity, Will thou be made whole? He bids you to arise in health and peace. Do not wait to feel that you are made whole. Believe His word, and it will be fulfilled. Last Wednesday, I shared with you this temple. This temple, but I failed to mention the temple, that this temple established by Solomon, but refurbished by King Herod. 
This temple, especially the foundation of this temple, is 2,000 years old. And you'll see, Dr. Hassel is uh, giving us information regarding this. This is a huge. You see it? Okay. How Let many him meters? Speak. One, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven meters, and it continues that way for a meter and a half. Do you know what the weight of that one stone is? 400 to 500 tons. Now, what vehicle would we have to use today to move a 400 to 500 ton stone? Dr. Young, when the Elijah, Elisha statue stone came to Southern, they had it be brought by train. It was before his time, but we remember, some of us remember that. And uh, it was brought by train, and news media came out for that big event as it was moved from the train track to Southern because it was a huge piece of stone weighing 80 tons. This stone weighs 400 tons, and it's only one cornerstone because if you look two courses up, there's another one. And if you look two courses up, there's another one. And if you look two courses up from there, there's another one. So do you remember Jesus, what he said about the cornerstone? Do you remember later what Paul yeah. writes about the cornerstone? Who is the chief cornerstone? Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. Uh -huh. What does a cornerstone do? Okay, we have a we have a contractor here, Harold. What what do cornerstones do? In, it's the strongest part of the building, and it aligns. I think I'm not a I'm not a mason. I never did masonry, but it aligns the rest of your walls going each direction. And so, if that cornerstone isn't placed just right, your whole building is going to be skewed and off, and your foundations are going to be weak. This foundation has stood the test of 2,000 years. What buildings do we have today that can withstand that test? I don't know. So Jesus is speaking about the cornerstone. The disciples, Paul later, is speaking about the cornerstone. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. And I'm happy that I was able to touch this cornerstone. And when Jesus Christ was uh, telling these words to his disciples and to those who, are, who were listening, he was pointing, according to Dr. Hassan, he was pointing to this, uh, to this um, chip cornerstone in order for them to, to realize how important his message was. The question is, is Jesus Christ the chief cornerstone in your life or in my life right now? The Bible tells us that we are the temple of God. Let us make Jesus our chief cornerstone, for without him, we will be broken into pieces and we will be crushed. Bethany, this was the place where we can find the tomb of Lazarus. And this inscription is inside this tomb. Death is swallowed, swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? I lost my mother when I was four years old due to lightning strike here in Putinkahoy. So be careful when there is lightning. That's why when there is lightning, I'm hiding myself inside the room. My father died because of stroke. And my brother died because of cancer. And I'm, I'm blessed because when I was called to, to serve AUP from NPUC, I was... I was given the chance to spend more time with my brother, with my dying brother. And when he was about to die, he was surrounded by three to five electric fans, and he has oxygen in his nose. But he said, please, um, I need more air. I need more electric fans. And... When he was struggling 
to keep his breath. My wife and Jen, now my wife and I, we pick up a songbook and sing him songs. You know, I'm not good in singing. But during that time, uh, to comfort my dying brother, I sang with my wife, read lots of texts. He died, not because of my voice, <laughs> but because of that cancer. So during my visit in this place, I'm encouraged that those loved ones we have who died in Christ will see them again. Amen? We, have, we are serving Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life. So I didn't, found, I didn't find uh, Lazarus there, although he died again after that. But, yeah, Dr. Augustine. So this is the church built again by Roman Catholic Church. Uh, and they said that this, in this place was the home of Mary, Mary Martha, and uh, Lazarus. And you see this picture, again, reminding us of the importance of the Word of God, that we need to spend time sitting at the Lord's feet. Now, uh, in Gethsemane, Jesus Christ said, My Father, I prayed, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. O oh, Jesus, in, the, in deepest night and agony, you spoke these words of trust and surrender to God, the Father in Gethsemane. In love and gratitude, I want to say in times of fear and of distress, My Father, I do not understand you, but I trust you. All, uh, all it trees. We can come to the place where Jesus agonized in prayer, either sleeping, like Peter, James, and John, or betraying him with a kiss, like Judas, or preventing his father's will by using our sword, like Peter or running like all of them when the soldiers seized him, or like Jesus, or like Jesus, we can come praying, watching and submitting our lives to His will, blessing and healing the wounds of our fellow men, like that of the servant's ear. In this place, Jesus won the battle for you and me. And in this place, Jesus Christ said, watch and pray that you will not be Overcome. He agonized for you and me. He prayed for you and me. Let's have a season of prayer. O oh, dear Heavenly Father, this moment, O oh Lord, together with the church, like Jesus, we are submitting our lives to you. Help us from now on to live a life dedicated to you and to do your will, in Jesus' name. Via Dolorosa. To deny oneself is indeed a cross to bear. And on these streets, we are reminded that Jesus Christ suffered. And he also told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. At the end of Via Dolorosa, if you go to the left, you'll end up to, uh, to Holy Sepulchre. And when you go to the right, you'll be 
going to the garden tomb. So there are two places. Which one is the right? So the issue regarding the place, the real place, is being debated. But uh, the good news here is, is that it happened, that Jesus Christ died for you and me. And this is the way going up to the Mount Calvary inside the church, a huge church. And this is on top of that uh, church. And we have this picture where uh, Jesus Christ, uh, every, um, uh, his, his experience when he died was portrayed. And this is believed to be where Jesus Christ was laid. So the people there, when they come, they bowed and uh, vow, uh, and worship um, and pray. And they even kiss this place. When you go to the right, you'll see the garden tomb. And I am leaning and I support this because it's near the, the picture or the um, description of the Bible. Then Pilate delivered Jesus to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went out into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew, what? Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him, one on the one on either side and Jesus in the center. So we have this. Oh. Looks like a skull. And another description, then they took the body of Jesus and uh, wounded in linen clothes with the spices as the manner of Jesus is to bury. And in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. So when they searched for it, they looked for a garden and also a tomb. And of course, this garden is uh, not the original one, but uh, this is um, the, uh, closer to the description of the Bible. I know some of you are hungry already, but we're almost done. This is not fried chicken. This is a hill bone and iron nail discovered or excavated first century CE. They believe this is uh, the way they crucified people during that time. And it looks like this or look like this. We don't know, but Jesus Christ suffered for you and me when he died on the cross. This is the Christ tree. They believe that uh, the soldiers, um, out of this, they made crown of thorns for Jesus. And this is the tomb, the empty tomb of Jesus. And this is the inscription on the door of the tomb. He is not here, for he is risen. Amen? We are serving a living God. We're serving Jesus Christ, who is alive forever and forevermore. And when he resurrected, he went to where? Mount of Olives, east of Jerusalem. And on your way to Mount of Olives, you'll find this cemetery. And, sorry, because the Jews believed that when the Messiah comes, their dead will be resurrected in this place. They believed uh, uh, in resurrection. So I have this clo close encounter on, the ta on, uh, on, that mount, on Mount of Olives. This, what is this? Cult. Okay. Because in, uh, from Mount of Olives, Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem riding on a donkey. You see? Yeah. 
And to, say, to, give, to give you some background, David went on this mount weeping after his son Absalom took the throne from him. Also, Jesus Christ prayed for Jerusalem in this place. He wept for it, but he was rejected by the Jews. On the top of Mount of Olives, Jesus Christ gave the Olivet course, uh, Discourse the signs of what? Jesus Christ's second coming. We'll not discuss all the signs. But in this place, Jesus Christ gave the signs of his second coming. And also in this place, Jesus Christ ascended to heaven. And when he ascended to heaven, before he was taken up to heaven, the Bible said in Matthew 28, 18 to 20, Go, he said to his disciples, Go and make disciples of all nations. This gospel commission is very important to Jesus because when he was living, he said, he said these words. So that's why if we follow Jesus Christ physically or spiritually, we'll end up if we follow him being fishers of men. I encourage you, if you have time and money, to reach the old city of Jerusalem before the new Jerusalem comes. Filipinos have no visa. That's good news. Be because we, during the time when Hitler killed many Jews, 13, uh, 1,300 Jews came in the Philippines. And they lived in Marikina. But before the Second World War, they were taken by USA in a Del Monte ship and then transport them to America. And the next thing is when Israel in 1947 or 1948 was established as a nation, only the Philippines from Asia voted for it. Ah, okay? So we have no visa. Okay? So my friends from Africa, they have visa in other places. Indonesian, Indonesian, I'm sorry, you're, you, you have visa. You, you, you are required to have visa to reach this place. In 2015, May 2015, they released a video uh, because 2015 is the year of Thanksgiving for Filipino people. So they, they established an open door in Tel Aviv. I was not able to reach that place as a sign of their Thanksgiving to the Filipino people for the 1,300 Jews, like Schindler's list. Okay? So if we cannot reach the place before Jesus Christ comes. We can follow Jesus Christ. When we pray, we are following the footsteps of Jesus Christ. When we study the Bible, we are following the footsteps of Jesus Christ. When we do ministry, join small groups here in the campus, master guides, join voice of youths, visit the sick, in the hospital, doing ministry for him, not only sleeping inside the campus, only studying. My dear students, don't. There is the temptation for us. I am a student also in IAS. I'm taking 12 units full load in IAS and nine units here in AUP. There is that temptation for us to not to read our Bibles. But don't wait till you graduate to serve God. You can serve Him while you are in the campus. Amen?
We follow the footsteps of Jesus when we forgive. Do you have enemy inside your heart? Probably this is the time that you let him go. You know what? When you hate someone, that you, you are giving that person a free lodge in your heart, while you are eating, walking, he is lodging in your heart. But if you let that person go and forgive him, it will bring health to your soul. And we can follow Jesus Christ by loving one another. Yes, you'll experience many things inside and outside of AUP, but the power, the grace of God is sufficient for us to love one another. Amen? to forgive one another, to be united in Christ. If you focus your eyes on someone, be careful if, you are, if your focus is, while well, here inside the AUP, you, you, you focus on someone, on your teacher, on the pastor, you'll fail to reach heaven. Follow Jesus. Whatever happens, follow Jesus and you'll reach safely in the New Jerusalem. Amen? Pray. Read your Bible. Join ministry. Forgive. Love. And I'd like to thank because this year is my last time to head the Boys of Youth because Boys of Youth will be headed by uh, Dr. 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 Uh, Molina. And this is our year's, you know, one year uh, accomplishment of the Boys of Youth. Praise God. I just totaled them this morning. So we have the total teams, 83 teams coming from AUP. Amen? Who joined Boys of Youth. You visited children, 3,768 children. You followed Jesus Christ when he said, Do not suffer the children to come to me. Attendance nightly, 3,078. Lo local church youth who joined, 573. Homes visited. As Jesus Christ visited homes like the homes of uh, Lazarus, you have visited 2,547 homes. You left footprints of Jesus Christ in those homes. Bible study, you did 1,889 Bible studies. And we have how many baptism? 754 baptism, almost 1,000. I hope 83 Boys of Youth teams will become 100 when we celebrate 100 years anniversary of AUP. Amen? And then these 754 will become 1,000. AUP students who joined, 509. Theology students, 201, but outnumbered by non-theology students. Amen. 308. Before I sit down, let me have a geographical appeal. I'm practicing reading a book on the sea, on the Dead Sea. You see? The Dead Sea, together with the Sea of Galilee, teach us, teaches us important lesson. Both of them are nourished by the Jordan River. The Sea of Galilee receives and shares because it has an outlet. However, the Dead Sea never shares since, since it has no outlet. This illustrates our spiritual life when we receive and do not share. There are two major bodies of water, as I have said. And you know, the content of the salinity or content of salt in the Dead Sea is 26 to 35 percent. And according to, uh, to, according to uh, a certain source, 
when the fish accidentally swim in the Dead Sea, it will die immediately. There's no living things living here. Spiritual input, but no spiritual output, stagnation. If you and I have spiritual input, but no spiritual output, will become stagnant, lifeless, bitter, and caustic. My dear young people, faculty, and staff, and all workers of AUP, we have a work to do. Jesus Christ is coming again very, very soon, and He gave us a mission to accomplish. Go and make disciples. Together, in unity, let's hold hands, forgive one another, love one another, and focus on the mission God has given us. Amen? If you are with me in this dedication, can you stand now? And we'll have a special prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you for sending your own beloved Son to live, to minister, to die for us. Thank you for confirming to us that He resurrected and that He is now in heaven. And very soon, He will come again. Oh Lord, we come before Your throne of grace. We pray for AUP. May You send Your Holy Spirit in each one of us. So that instead of hatred, love will dwell in our hearts. That we will forgive one another. That we will be united. To accomplish your mission in the power of your Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. We want to walk with you in the new Jerusalem and in the new earth and new heaven. As you have walked On the old city of Jerusalem and in Israel, walk inside PIC now and touch the hearts of these young people and everyone who is in here. So that from now on, we will be together for you to glorify your name, not our name, O Lord. We're nothing. You're everything. We want to hug you. We want to see you face to face and to be with you forever and ever. Thank you, O Lord, for acknowledging our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. You may now be seated. Now is another opportunity that we can express, show our gratitude to God for everything that He has done for us. Now is the time that we can return a faithful tithe and also give our liberal offerings. <laughs> 